from a fallout shelter in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Holy bucket. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Dear Abby, I am happily married to a wonderful man but recently became attracted to a co-worker. I would never act on these feelings, but it's starting to distract me at work. I have thought about leaving my job, but walking away would be a bad career move and would put a financial strain on my family. As long as I don't act on my feelings, is it morally wrong to continue working here? I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> First of all, you got bigger problems <laughs> than where you ought to be working. Let's start with that. You are married to a quote-unquote wonderful man. By the way, if marriage is so great and you're so happily married, how could you become attracted to anybody else? And the reality is that I don't believe anymore that people are truly monogamous. I do believe uh, that people are never so happily married that they only want to be with one person. Occasionally you might get the luck of the draw, the roll of the dice. Maybe sometimes people are just too lazy to act on their feelings. This is much more common than people admit. Stupid. I mean, this is a good reason not to get married, because this kind of thing can happen. Jesus! Now, Abby wrote back and said, Dear Unsure in Syracuse, <laughs> It's time for a truth session with yourself. Could you be sending your co-workers signals that you're available? If so, it might be better for your marriage and your career to look for a new job. Marriage isn't a prophylactic against becoming attracted to others, but responsible adults don't take the bait. Nothing in life is free, and this could cost you your future. But here's the problem. Going to another job, that's like uh, Cardinal Mahoney reassigning a priest to another parish. The minute he gets there, he's going to be grabbing some ass somewhere else. I mean, it, it, that doesn't solve the problem. If you are so easily distractible in such a happy, happy marriage, what is going to happen is no matter where you go, you're going to find somebody you're attracted to. I mean, the bottom line is, if you had a rule like me, you wouldn't get into this uh, trouble. Because my rule is, I don't have sex with people I work with. And I know Dean was relieved to hear that, by the way. I don't do that. <laughs> I just don't. I thought now that uh, now that Dean's moving to the 90069, I thought it was just good to make that statement right here, right now. I just don't do it. I don't have sex with people at work. So if I were to be married, if I were to be in a living together relationship, if I were to be in a serious relationship, 
The bottom line here is I wouldn't get into this kind of trouble because it wouldn't matter if someone was attractive at the office. I wouldn't be having sex with them because they're all walking lawsuits. They're all walking lawsuits. The best thing for me is not to be in the office, not to be hanging around the people in the office, not to be socializing with the people in the office. And ask anybody who works here, I don't. <laughs> I come in, I have a studio in a different part of town from the rest of the company, and then I finish my work. It's an all-male gender workplace, and then I get the hell out of here. And then I take advantage of other people who don't work here. Use them and toss them. And you never have to go to the human resources department when you, uh, you know, when you use and toss people you don't work with. That's pretty simple. But I, you know, I think Abby is wrong. I think the letter writer is wrong. I think if you're attracted to somebody at the office, going to another job will not fix your problem. That means you are available to the right person under the right circumstances. If you're attracted to somebody at this office, you're going to be attracted to somebody at any office. Have you have any experience with this? Do tell. Sound like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A fat girl is kind of like a scooter, okay? It, it, they're fun to drive until somebody catches you. It's the Tom Likes Show. Tom like his show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Right. We read you the letter from Dear Abby. I want the chick who uh, is happily married, she says, but, oh, she's attracted to somebody at work. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Sarah on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay, I've got a story for you. So right. basically, my first job out of college, um, which was recently, I uh, worked. I went to the corporate office to do some training and ended up meeting this married guy. Um, we fooled around a little bit. I, I was out there for a few weeks. I came back. Um, we began a relationship over IM and email that was really sexual and over the phone. And basically, uh, he was planning a trip to come out here to actually consummate our sexual relationship. And um, corporate went through all my emails and all my IMs, and they fired us both. So yeah, you, it's not you a good got, idea. You got exactly what you deserved. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, it was, for me, a learning experience because now I'm never going to. But come on. Uh, you can't tell me you didn't know that was wrong. You can't. Well, absolutely. But, but Tom, there is something. And bad for your career, too. It's absolutely bad for my career. But the thing is, when you're. Even if you didn't get caught, it's bad for your career. I know. But when you're young and you're used to getting sexual attention and using it for power, which is horrible, but girls do it, then it's sort of, well, like, taboo, and that's probably why we did it. Well, so. and, and then you get what you paid for. And, uh, you know, uh, I think a majority of American companies now are spying on what you're doing online. They want to know how you're using your time, how you're using company resources. Absolutely. I can't tell you how many times I get threatening email from people at, at their jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they, they send the email from the company, uh, the email domain. And so mm -hmm. I just uh, make a handy-dandy phone call to the human resources department. And I say, uh, do you have a Joe Jones working over there? And they say, yes. I say, well, you'd be surprised what he's doing during the workday. Mm -hmm. And I send a copy of the letter, and then uh, Joe uh, suddenly finds he's got no job anymore. Oh, yeah. It was bad. I mean, I was on the phone with uh, the CEO corporate and, um, of corporate and the human resources team, and they said, basically, we've just spent the past three days going through all of your emails and reading all of your things and reading all of your pictures or looking at all of your pictures. So, uh, And were there naked there. shots of you, too? Oh, partially naked, yes. Partially naked. Yes. Uh-huh. So... Now I'm sure that uh, they're having a good time over there. Oh, uh, they're gonna they gotta have a real good time when you try to put their name on a resume and they uh, get a phone call from your next potential employee. Yes, I am not going to do that. So, so how are you how are you going to explain the two years since you left college? Uh, basically, you know, I had a job before that as well that wasn't a, as big of a deal. Where you were at El Pollo Loco? No. 
I wasn't. I was working for an ad agency. Ah. But, um, Same difference. Oh, <laughs> no, no. It's a little different. But I, And I had a great internship in New York, so I have really good references. I, I didn't work at this job very long, so I'm hoping that I'm just going to leave it off. I'm just amazed if you have any semblance of intelligence that you would think that that was okay or that you would think you could get away with it. I didn't think it was okay, but I did think I could get away with it. That's the problem. I, I'm amazed because you yeah. don't sound stupid. Oh, I'm absolutely not. It was. But it was, how how would you think you could get away with that? How would you, you know, think that was good for your career? I thought that it, they had maybe bigger fish to fry than spying on me, but apparently they didn't. And no, but the easy, it's not a matter of they, they. Here's the big fish they have to fry: the possibility that you would file a lawsuit against them. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's why this is important to them. Mm -hmm. You can't do any of that stuff on the company computer. That's what your cell phone was made for. Uh, I'll use it for that too. Don't worry. <laughs> no, no, but but and and even then, banging around with com with company employees is a bad idea. I don't care what city they're based in. And banging around with married employees? Are you kidding me? I know. So what, what did you learn from this? Be more careful next time. No, don't. Don't, um, there's plenty of other guys out there to mess around with, basically. And, and why do you need to be messing around with married guys? Why do you get a thrill out of that? No, I don't, you know what, I don't, I haven't done that in the past. It was just a specific, very strong sexual attraction, and it was wrong. Uh, strong sexual attraction? You never even met the guy. No, 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 I did. I was out there for three weeks. Uh -huh. for three. Yeah, so we we met each other, and we, you know, it started out there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Basically, I don't know. Then, and wait till you get married and somebody does the same thing to you. I'm not actually planning on getting married. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't really. I mean, I definitely. Fine. Wait till you have a live-in boyfriend and somebody does it to you. No, you know, actually, Tom, my latest, my longest relationship has been about three months. So I far. I don't like, I don't like, I'm not interested in that. No. I, I don't, I think really? people get married. So you're going to be a spinster. You're going to be 45, 50 years old, living alone. No, I'll, I have a lot of good friends, and I'm really good looking, so I manage pretty well. And you're I not going to be like women with those biological time clocks ticking when they turn 29 or 30 yeah. or 35 or whatever. No, my brother will have plenty of kids for the both of us, so I don't, I don't need kids. But either. you won't feel like you need a boyfriend or a, a significant other ever, not ever. No. So when you're uh, 45 and it's Thanksgiving and there you are, Auntie Sarah, who has to be invited over because she has no place to go for the holidays, you're okay with that? Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of good friends and family, so I really don't need a guy. Seriously, they're more trouble than they're worth sometimes. Well, we'll see. Really? We'll see. You're 23. We'll see if you say that later. By the way, I'm all in favor. I just don't know a lot of women who stick to that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Chad on the Tom Likas Show. How are you, Tom? Doing great, Chad. Glad to hear it. I am one of the married guys that works in the business that is attracted to at least 15 to 20 of them because there are tons of 18, 19, 20-year-old girls that work in my business, in my building, and they're all attractive. And I've chosen to be the smarter one who can uh, watch all the TV I want. I just can't touch the buttons, you know, because I am happily married. You know, I have a beautiful wife, and uh, she takes care of me rather well. You know, cleans the house and takes care of the bills and all that stuff as well. So, uh, you know, I, I don't understand why people can't distinguish between, you know, watching the TV and touching the buttons. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I totally do. So I, I, I don't think that, I mean, this lady wanting to or considering a career move because she's attracted to another guy, how is that smart? You know, if she doesn't trust herself or whatnot, then maybe a career move is the best for her. But, you know, like I said, I'm attracted to, you know, there's tons of girls in my building that I'm attracted to. But, you know, I'm going to keep my career first and my marriage first, you know, other than, uh, you know, moving on to somebody else. Well, I mean, if you need to bang everything that comes along, why be married? Just bang everything that comes along. I, I don't understand people like this. They know they're not done banging around, and they get married, and they tell people how blissfully happy they are, like the woman who wrote to Dear Abby here.
Right. Yeah, I mean, I did all my banging when I was 21 to 25, 26, you know, and then I got into a serious relationship, and I'm ready to start a family, <laughs> you know. I got all my banging out. Now, granted, I mean, I, it's, it's impossible not to be attracted to somebody oh, else. I haven't gotten all my banging out yet. I want you to know. I understand. You know, sometimes I feel like I haven't either. But, you know, the decision was made, and I wanted to get married, and, you know, but still, obviously, being attracted to somebody else other than your significant other makes you makes you know that you can still get a little banging in. But, you know, I've tried to be smart about it and, you know, not S where I eat. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This here's Tig on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Going okay, Tig. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, uh, that was hooking up with two chicks at the same job at the same time. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was fun, though. Well, yeah, it's fun until you get caught and lose your job. Then it's not fun Absolutely. anymore. I don't recommend it at all. Um, I would, if I had a chance to do it again, I probably wouldn't. Well. So, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, aside from all the human resources issues, you know. By the way, the train is here. Yeah, I know. The, the uh, aside from the human resources issues, uh, you know, you got to look at that damn face every day you walk in. So you don't want to do that. That's right. So you are right, Tig. Thank you for the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Uriel on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Dad. Son. Some long time. Thank you. Yes. Man, listen, listen. I used to work for this uh, for this distributing company. Uh, they, they delivered parcels, and um, I fooled around with this one chick from work. Um, but this happened for about I think it was about a month and a half, almost two months. And apparently, this guy had a huge mouth. The only persons that I told were uh, my close friends, and they didn't even work where I did. So, anyways. This guy had a big mouth. Apparently, he got big human resources. And then uh, one day, just out of the blue, uh, the manager from human resources uh, calls me in. I come in. I sit down. And I have no clue what she's going to say. She says, Edgar, are the accusations true? And I say, uh, what are you talking about? She goes on ahead and says, well, we've heard this and this and this. And I say, yes, it is true. She says, what do you have to say about yourself? And I say, you know what, ma'am? I passionately did what I wanted to do as a man. And if that's wrong, I don't know what's right. Literally, she started laughing. I started laughing. And then after, after about maybe 10 seconds of, uh, of uh, smiles, she says you're fired. Really? Really, unfortunately. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you know what? You know what? That's, that's, not, that's not the funniest part. The funniest part is, so after, after I got fired from this job, I, I, uh, I started applying for different locations. Um, this was about the second company that picked me up, uh, that had an interview with me. That's what I mean. And, um, so, so this guy sits down with me and, you know, does a whole Q and A thing. And then he says, well, what happened to your, to your last employer? They seem, they seem to be paying you reasonably well. They're big, yada, yada, yada. And so I honestly had to tell him the truth. I didn't want him calling and then call, and then finding out it was up. So I told him, I told him, you know what, uh, me and this one chick, we were having a relationship, and human resources fired me because of that. And then I, and then I, I, I didn't say nothing, I paused, he paused, and then he tells me, you know what, that's what a man's going to do. And he told me about a situation that, ha that happened with him in, the, in one, of our, one of his past jobs. And I feel that because of that bonding that we had, I got hired. Well, okay. <laughs> that was just pretty awesome. I mean, I, why? I, why I, would you want to play with fire like this? I don't get it. You know, you know what? You know what? It's not that I, fi that I play with fire. Me, I'm not a person. I am not going to lie to somebody that has the power to look over my previous employer, employers, and determine that I lied. If, if I did. So I, I, it's, it's, it's the, my best character is be upfront and as honest as I can be. And because of that, geez, I, I guess, I, I guess I'm blessed for being, uh, uh, uh immoral at, at, at the workplace, which by the way, I think is just a ridiculous, uh, 
uh, uh, ridiculous thing that human reef that all these companies come up with. It's not ridiculous okay. because companies get sued for this stuff all the time. And by the way, employees get sued for it too. Okay, okay, that, that's a very good. Point. But then you have to look at the other spectrum, at the other, at the other, at the other polar extreme. You have, you have to take into consideration that sometimes two people get together, and sometimes you know it's very sly. Maybe not for long. But just for a quick, you know. It's a bad idea. I'm never going to stop saying it's a bad idea. Anybody you have sex with at the office is a possible lawsuit. That's correct. And, and until you have been, by the way, until you have been a victim of a frivolous lawsuit, you will never understand what that takes out of you. I mean, I just settled a 10-year lawsuit. 10 years. Ouch. 10 years. Son, you have no idea what these things can turn into. You go ahead and do it your way, but I'm telling you, you're going to find out one day the hard way. One day when one of these chicks who is psychotic decides to go to the Human Resources Department and turn you in, you're dead. Yeah. No, you have a good point, Paul. You have, you have a very good point, Like I said, I'm not going to stand here and argue with that because, uh, like you said, I mean, you never know one of these psycho chicks is going to come along and then just... Lie and well, not lie, but yeah, I, I get your point. I, I get, you, I, I totally get your point. Hey, Tom. Yes. I want you. To, I want you to take me out of uh, Kobe style, man. Go Lakers. Here you go, Uriel. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. This is Ethan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Awesome. I just wanted to call and tell you a story. Um, I work in a restaurant right now, and I I'm with a few girls at once from the restaurant, and I have been for a while. None of them know anything. But should I be worried about human resources with that? Working it depends. Are you worried about losing your? Are you worried about losing your job? Worry about losing my job at yeah. a restaurant? Yeah. Oh, okay. That that really is what it boils down to. Are you worried about that possibility? I guess I'm worried. I mean, I have about four years' experience, so I'm sure that I could go somewhere else. But I don't know. I think it's fun. I have a lot of fun with it. Well, you have fun until uh, you have fun until somebody decides to report you to human resources. Then you don't have fun anymore. <laughs> okay, so I could have a lawsuit because of that. Well, if, well, put it this way: number one, you have two chicks you're banging, and they don't know about each other. They have no idea. All right. they talk, but Let's they no say idea. one finds out about the other. Uh -huh. And then says, I can't believe you did this. I can't believe you embarrassed me. And then decides to go to the Human Resources Department. Okay. You're done. Okay. But, I mean, if I had a career, I, don't, I think that'd be, I would think twice. Well, if you had a career, career, what college, what career college career. are you attending right now? I'm just going to community college right now to, to get my AA. Well, why aren't you going to like a real college? Because don't you have to take the same classes anyway in order... You know? Well, not exactly, but do you have a plan to go to a four-year university ultimately? Yes, of course. Yeah, in accounting. I see. All right. So this is just a job that gets you by till then? This is just until I'm done with school. Okay. This is no career. Well, it all no depends on whether you think job. it depends on whether you think you're going to lose your job. Yeah. And whether you think that's a problem. Yeah. Okay. I just thought I'd call and uh, share my story with you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you did, for sure. I don't think people think about the, the consequences of things like this. I don't think they do. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's going on? Not much, Eric. Uh, I'm in a situation right now. I work in a big company and uh, it employs about 5,500 people. and uh, I'm seeing... I'm not married. Seeing... Three women, two of them, one of them supervises the other one, okay? The other one that doesn't supervise or works in a different part of the building, different floor, found out. She's going to march down and confront the other woman that she found out about one day this week. 
What do I do? <laughs> well, this isn't the time to be asking. <laughs> There's nothing you could do. Zilcho. What are you going to do? Pay her not to say anything? Uh, <laughs> threaten her? I mean, here are your options. Threaten her. Pay her off. Tell the other one. Now, somebody's going to say something, and I just want to tell you, it's not true. So if anybody comes to you and says anything about me, just remember, it isn't true. People want to say things about me to ruin my reputation. But just remember, if anyone does say anything, anything you hear about me is not true, okay? Just remember that. I mean, what are you going to do? I thought about just ignoring it. Just ignore it? Who's going to ignore that? <laughs> what chick is going to ignore a visit from another chick saying, stay away from my man? Well, I just did. I'm not her. Just man. ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not her man. We're just, you know. Let me tell you something, Eric. She's going, whether, whether you see it that way or not, if she needs the drama of going and visiting the other woman, mm -hmm. that's why. Drama. She sees you as her man. And that's a problem. Of course it's a problem. Because you're banging another chick. <laughs> you were not candid with these women. You didn't say, I'm a free agent, I do whatever I want. You let them believe whatever they wanted to believe. Right. Well, guess what? This one believed that she was only seeing you and you were only seeing her. Okay. Right? Right. Okay. So now what? There's nothing you can do. Just wait for the phone to ring. And, and, and then the fallout will follow. Sure. You better hope these girls don't scratch each other's eyes out across some big seat at the office. Because you know who they're going to blame? You. Right. Could that be bad? Yeah. Let me tell you something. If I'm the boss at your office and an incident like that happens, you're all fired. See ya. No exceptions. Out. Because I don't want to get sued. Hmm. Wow. Okay. But I did learn, learn from this, though. You know, I'm not going to do this anymore. I've been telling guys not to do this for decades, and they, they they don't pay attention. They all find out the way you're going to find out, the hard way. Mm -hmm. All righty. Okay, well, thanks for the tips. Well, I don't mean to hurt your feelings or freak you out there, Eric, but I really think that's where you're heading, for Christ's sake. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Man, you know, you need to exterminate this broad on the line, man, because all I'm hearing is, me, 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 me. Oh, we're on our show, man. She's the kind of chick that you talk about all the time, man. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Talking about an email to Dear Abby about a woman who is so happily married. Happily married. But finds herself attracted to somebody in the office. You're kidding me, right? Keanu on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you? Doing okay. Pleasure to speak with you. Calling you from beautiful downtown Honolulu. I'm on my cell phone. It's about 85 and sunny here. Hey, I'm calling about um, what you said about making, uh, you know, having relationships in the workplace. Look, I agree with you. Ethically, morally, it's just not a good idea to comp uh, dip the company pen in the dumpy ink. Company ink. And I think we all agree to that. But under... Title VII of the Federal Code and amendments under the Americans with Disabilities Act, as well as most of the state civil rights acts, it is not illegal to have a relationship, sexual or otherwise, in the workplace. No, no, it's not. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying 
is that and 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 you got to hear me out on this because this is the this is the key. It's not a matter of okay. whether it's illegal. It's a matter that when you have sex with someone at the office, if if it doesn't go well, and it's a female who's psychotic, like many of them are, all that woman has to do is go to the human resource department and say that you made unwanted sexual advances. Well, that's and true. most companies that's nowadays that's take no chances. If someone comes in and makes a statement like that, most companies just say, it's been very nice knowing you. And you're right in the sense that it's unilateral in terms of the gender. Pretty much is. But if there's litigation, certainly, and you're right about frivolous lawsuits, nobody wants to litigate or be litigated against. But the fact is that, you know, an employee who is fired for that purpose does have a case against their employer. I agree with you regarding the practical issues. Yeah, I mean, sure, it's legal. As I always say on this program, let me tell you something that's legal, okay? I take my $71,000 luxury car and I could drive it down to the worst part of Los Angeles. Decide what you think that is, and that's where I'm going. Late at night. But you know what? As I'm driving through this really scary neighborhood, I decide, you know what? I'd like a Slurpee over there. There's a 7-Eleven. It's open late. So I pull my uh, Lexus into the parking lot, and I uh, leave the uh, six-speaker Mark Levinson audio system playing and the engine running and the key in the ignition, and I get out, and I go in to get my Slurpee. You know what? God bless America. It's legal to do that. There's no law that says I have to lock up my car. No law says I have to turn the engine off. No law says I have to turn the CD player off. So I get out of my car, and I go in, and I get my Slurpee, and it takes about 10 minutes for the transaction. When I come out, my car is gone. So you see, it was completely legal to park my car in front of the 7-Eleven in the worst neighborhood in town. But well, it's, it's, an but it's that's stupid. An interesting, yeah, it's an interesting analogy, and I agree with you. I mean, such place is just bad. It, it's a very, very unwise thing to do because it come back and bite you in the ass, as you've heard other people have been bitten in the ass by this. Indeed. Indeed. Tom, what a slice of heaven it is to speak with you. Tell Dino I can get two scoop rice and a good bento. <laughs> Have a plate lunch for me and get some sticky rice with that, will you please? Please. That's what I want right now. Tell you what. After I go green tonight, I want a plate lunch. one 800 800 tom that's our telephone number. Yes, it's Earth Day, for God's sake. Let's say hello here to uh, Dano. Dano is uh, listening to the online stream in San Francisco on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, yeah, Earth son. Day. We should get some... Uh... Gift certificates to the abortion, the abortion clinic. Yeah, gift certificates um, to the abortion clinic. All right, I will to the uh, to the ninety seventh pregnant Catholic who calls in. <laughs> he gave you yeah. a coupon for your local abortion clinic. That's right. <laughs> hey, man, I love you. You got a new son. Hey, listen, I was uh, sleeping with this female in HR at my at my past job. I worked at a hotel. You were wait a minute. You were. <laughs> <laughs> you were sleeping. Let me understand. This. You were sleeping with a woman who works in the HR department. Yeah, I mean, she was in her young twenties. Like I was, I was sleeping with a forty-year-old uh, uh, heifer. But um, yeah, she was uh, pretty young. I was, and uh, let's just say I was doing it for about maybe a few months, and uh, then she turned into a maniac, dram dramatic monster. So I had to kick her to the curb. And she didn't get it. She she was driving me nuts, calling me and parking in front of my house, following me. So I, I sent her rose stems with uh, roses that that I that I cut off. I cut off the the flowers and I just sent her stems. Tom, that caved in her world. She got <laughs> flowers. She got flowers and her coworkers. Oh my God, you got roses. <laughs> she opened up the she opened up the rectangle box and boom, just stems. They had thorns because I I cut them from my uh. My mom, my stepmom's garden. And, uh, yeah, she had that same feeling that she felt when her Maltese dog uh, got ran over by a uh, car at the at the dog park three months prior. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you, she didn't tan. She didn't bake and bake for at least two months after. She went to crap. She looked like those monsters from the Jim Henson movie. She was, <laughs> she was bad. And you know what, man? I, I, that's made up for you. I think you're going to like it because you always take people out cool style. 
I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you out the certain style, Tom. Check this out. All right. Uh, I'm gonna take you out Marilyn Monroe eating sleeping pills style. Boom! <laughs> I made that up for you, man. I could tell. <laughs> I love that. One eight, yeah, save that, will you? Marilyn Monroe style. There we go. Marilyn Monroe eating pills style. Getting the whole thing in there. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our. Tom. He's gone green already today. I think. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. It's Blake. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Tom. Blake, they've ruined a perfectly good name. Every time I hear somebody named Blake, I think of a soap opera. Oh, that's actually what I was named after. No, don't tell me that. Yeah, that's what my mom said. You mean Dallas? Yes, I'm in Dallas, Texas. No, no, were you named after the Blake on Dallas, the TV show? Uh, most likely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh... I moved up to New York for about a year, and uh, I was working at a small restaurant up there. And I was 20, you know, and uh, this three-year-old who was working there, you know. 40, How old were you, were you cut out? How old? I was 20. She was 40. 40. And hot, hot MILF, basically. Really? And she was married, but paying all kinds of, of attention to me. And I didn't know what to do, so uh, one night she took me home, but missed my house and parked behind, like, an old elk lodge that was closed up for dinner. And she proceeded to uh, uh, adv make advances, basically, and told me to take my pants off. I did. <laughs> she told you to take your pants off? Yes, she did. And... I'd say for about three months after that, we uh, we were doing it pretty frequently every night. And then it just started getting weird. Like, she was coming over all the time. And finally one night, she was driving me home, and I just told her, look, uh, <laughs> you're getting weird for me. I don't want to ever do this again. And she got upset and said, fine. Well, about a month later... We're at my house, not me and her, me and my friends are at my house partying, getting drunk, and she shows up, and we end up doing it again. <laughs> it just goes to show you what alcohol and 40-year-old women will do. I guess so. <laughs> but I have no complaints. She was wild and crazy. Didn't She wouldn't say no to anything because really? she wasn't married. Like yeah. a guy. Yeah. Yeah. And because her, her husband wasn't ever giving it to her, so I could do anything I wanted to her, and she wouldn't say no. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> so then when you had to leave New York and go back to Dallas, what happened? Um, doesn't matter where I live. I still get more ass in a toilet seat no matter where I go. Look at you. What a stud. Yeah, I've been listening to you since I was 15 years old, so it helps. I love that. <laughs> Very always, nice. Uh, so you won't be getting married. Oh, never, man. Never. I've been listening to Lycus 101 ever since I was old enough to even know what sex was. I love that. Hey, Tom, uh, take me out tribal style with a Kurt Cobain. African tribal style. No one's asked for Kurt Cobain in a while. Here you go. go very close range <laughs> unbelievable well if i took another phone call here you know what would happen watch this the person will take too long to get to the point like tony and diamond bar tony you're on the tom like show we got very little time here oh my god mr tom like is how are you sir i'm doing just great Great, great. Well, you know what? I just wanted to quick. I wanted to tell you my story, but I experienced firsthand what it was like to actually kind of uh, be swimming in the pond that you shouldn't have. You know, well, we'll never know what that was like, will we? Now, the Tom Likas Show.